ప్రొఫెసర్ Jay Kumar is working as a professor in Amrita Vishwa Vidya Peedam in Chennai. Welcome you sir. Now I request Dr. R. Murugan, Professor Department of Mechanical Engineering, Panimal Institute of Technology to introduce the guest for us. Thank you Amos. So it gives me immense pleasure to introduce uh, our Professor Dr. V. Jay Kumar. So, to the participants so actually professor jay kumar is very famous with the engineering students so now i am introducing uh, to the participants who are all coming from all over india so dr v jay kumar currently serves as professor and chairperson in the department of mechanical engineering amrita school of engineering amrita vishwa vidya pidam chennai campus he acquired distinction both at the graduate and post graduate level He completed his doctoral work at the College of Engineering, Gindi, Anna University, Chennai. In addition, he also has degrees in Masters of Business Administration and a Postgraduate Diploma in Operation Research. Dr. V. J. Kumar has over 22 years of teaching experience, including seven and a half years abroad. He has served as a visiting faculty member in leading institutes in the Sultanate of Oman, Eritrea and Ethiopia. He has authored 10 textbooks in topics related to mechanical engineering, which have been very well received by the student community and teaching fraternity. Four of his books have been prescribed as textbook or reference book in various Indian institute, universities. To his credit, he has published more than 75 research papers in Scopus Index journals. His areas of research include cellular manufacturing system, friction stair welding, composite materials, non-conventional machining techniques, and the production and the operation management. Dr. V. J. Kumar is recognized and honored with many awards, such as IET CLN Exemplary Teacher Award, Best Professor Award, Excellent Professional Achievement Award, Best Faculty Award, and Best Paper Award by various institutes, professional bodies of repute for his contribution to the field of education. He had organized three international conferences, one national conference and many faculty and student development programs. He has served as member of the academic council of several universities. He is also a life member of various professional bodies, including Institution of Engineers and the Indian Society of Technical Education. So welcome you, Professor. Uh, it is our pleasure to welcome you for our uh, program. Thank you so much, Professor. Uh, very good morning uh, to all the participants. Uh, you know, first of all, my thanks and you know appreciations to Dr. R. Murugan, Professor, coordinator of this event. The reason for uh, you know my presence here is to uh, to Dr. R. Murugan and also. Uh, HOD principal and management of the Panimalar Institute of Technology for this wonderful opportunity. Before I proceed, even I should uh, thank wholeheartedly my own institute, my management, uh, Amrita School of Engineering Chennai also for allowing me to share uh, whatever little I know uh, with uh, my dear uh, no, colleagues. Okay, so first let me tell, you know, uh, kind of uh, what to say? Uh, I may not be the right person technically to uh, take this uh, topic on how to create uh, educational content. You know, all it had happened uh, to everyone, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, from this March of 2020, even now uh, that Corona, the post pandemic or during pandemic, we have been, uh, you know, the uh, experience, we have been forced to learn many new skills, which otherwise we would not have learned forever, or it would have taken some decades to learn things that we have learned it in one or two months. So basically being a, you know, the chalk and talk or blackboard, you know, that traditional teacher myself, always uh, like any other person who are there in the field for two decades, they have the very high inertia, you know, the internal resistance against adopting to new technologies, especially, you know, people like us will not be so gifted with the, uh, you know, computing things and the usage of technology, you know, like the younger lots of the teachers. So we all felt that uh, uh, embracing this change is not our cup of tea or it would be difficult. So this is about the mental block that we need to overcome. So what I am presenting here may not be an as, as an expert, you know, who can uh, tell you about software, how to do that, all the technical nuances pertaining to creating an educational video. Uh, probably I will be the right person. In fact, <laughs> I feel so because a person uh, who is uh, who in working progress, who is just uh, one year uh, into uh, this kind of uh, uh, creating a educational content, uh, especially that I'm in fact lucky uh, to, you know, get forced to learn that skill, you know, courtesy or thanks to uh, this COVID or pandemic, you know, that phase. So this is the background. Uh, so I am going to share uh, what I have learned, say, last 12 months, uh, how I have embraced few things I thought of sharing with you, not more than that. So let me share my uh, screen to you. Can someone confirm from the other end uh, whether you could able to see my screen? Yes, sir. It's visible, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank uh, you. Change it to full screen mode, sir. Please. How about now? I've already done that. Probably there is a time lag. Okay. Sir, is it in full screen mode now? Uh, how about others? Shall I proceed? Or not yet? No, sir. It's not changed. Eh? Uh, otherwise, you share it once again sir close and share it proceed how about now uh, proceed try sharing the full screen professor uh, okay. Entire screen. Yeah, yeah. Rather than the window. Okay. Is that fine? Sir, is that fine? Now. Is it good to go? Uh, no, sir. Actually, you have to click on the window. Share full screen. Then you have to check the window. Uh, then only it will be shared. Uh, yes, Professor. Thank you. No, it's fine. Uh, OK, OK. Right, right. Yeah. So this is my outline of presentation. Rare, uh, just some context uh, setting we will do, uh, then uh, some hardware software requirements, you know, for creating educational contents, then what are the various ways or methods uh, that normally we have in our hand in order to create our own educational contents effectively, depending upon our requirement, we will try to have overview. 
uh, and some tips for creating educational videos at the end. As you all aware, uh, this is such a big topic. You know, uh, most of them are like a DIY type, do it yourself type. So what we can do in this one hour session or so is just we can give you a drone's view and you know we could uh, simply uh, share the experience and can positively influence you <laughs> some of you uh, to, to take embrace uh, such uh, methods uh, so that's all the objective so just to uh, make a master of uh, those methods definitely cannot be the outcome or agenda of this presentation the presentation is merely to introduce the young teachers about the various methods and the significance or what's my experience uh, in that process. So that's the uh, take home you should be having uh, from this uh, presentation. Fantastic. First, let us understand uh, the context. There are so many good things have happened, if I say so, uh, due to this pandemic or during COVID-19, one such good thing is some excellent reforms that UGC has announced in education in India. The couple of them I could, uh, you know, immediately say is this. Students can now pursue two degree courses simultaneously, which was not possible earlier our days. So now, uh, you know, students can do one degree in regular mode, the other one either in open or distance learning mode. A person doing BTEC in mechanical engineering regular mode can have one more course, uh, online course for from IIT Madras, say data analytics or say AI. So all possible now. It's a, a one reform which I really feel that, you know, we should be uh, informing our student to exploit it to their betterment. The other reform, uh, what I uh, you know observed is top hundred Indian universities can start online courses. This is from uh, June 2020. In fact, they have said you know institution with the NAC rating of 3.26 and above, and those who are in top hundred, they can float online courses without even seeking the permission from the UGC. Whereas the institutions or universities who are in top 100, but their NAC rating is between 3 to 3.25. They can also float online degree courses with the permission of UGC. So I think this is going to have a you know, huge impact, hopefully for the positive impact in the days to come. And also this, I really like this even if we are back to old normal from the new normal we will be adopting blended learning even when all universities all colleges reopen and function normally so this is another uh, big takeaway so this online teaching mode these technologies are going to stay iit madras launched its first online course even they say in programming data science they are the world first to introduce that and another news is i think uh, please do you know that uh, online engineering programs are being accredited in us for example the top accreditation body abet like nbfrs have accredited n number of courses which are being done 100 percent online including core engineering courses say electrical engineering you know, software engineering, all this engineering technology, all these courses have been accredited, online courses have been accredited by Abbott. So days are not far away that uh, we also will be going to see a number of online, you know, core engineering programs or core, uh, you know, specializations are being done and they are being going to be uh, accredited by, say, NBA. So please understand the thread what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is this online teaching, this phenomena of, you know, the skills that as a teacher has to embrace is not short term. It is not that uh, only during this phase. 
this skills associated with online teaching virtual teaching virtual room class setup is going to stay is here to stay with us even once we that that too especially with this all the backgrounds we will be better equipped if you are aware of these reforms and if you equip ourselves to be you know very uh, to be a major player uh, in that process like i have said online courses all that so online teaching is here to say because of that there are various benefits uh, of learning online increase flexibility of time flexibility of location all that right so i don't want to go into that uh, so this is the context you should be evolving that right so even uh, i am uh, comfortable with a few things uh, but uh, i should unlearn them i should uh, uh, be you know open to this reforms and uh, rather than complaining and finding some uh, very uh, acceptable uh, reasons uh, let me say why can't i because i am a passionate teacher anyway so when i, I can be a passionate uh, a teacher uh, during my regular mode during my chalk and talk mode uh, you know my traditional blackboard or green board method i can be surely effective even during online classes i can be surely effective even while creating an educational content provider if i could add few tools few methods few strategies into my uh, teaching kit into my teaching armory so what we need to do it is understanding the significance understanding that this is the way forward understanding that this is how the next 20 years 25 years our teaching journey is going to march forward i should be able to make that adjustment you know at the earliest faster the better otherwise you will not be more you know prominent in this teaching field so in order to be more relevant in your field these are the important things rather than somebody pushes you to learn why can't you learn on your own right that is the message i have said to myself so then i have started the journey say in 2020 after you know june onwards i have started thinking that aspect then i started uh, you know we have always that google uncle uh, then you know the youtube <laughs> anti i don't know what to call so with their helps uh, you know all would be self learning so that's what i'm sharing here very often uh, we come across this kind of a technology we call synchronous mode of learning or teaching a synchronous node then people use this technology hybrid learning mode what we have to embrace at times we hear blended learning mode so uh, sometimes you know the concepts are so simple but uh, uh, the jargons are so new so that should not uh, make us to panic in a way so let us understand uh, the uh, difference people interchangeably use hybrid learning mode and blended mode and all but uh, what is the agreed definition of that what is the meaning of that let us spend some few minutes now synchronous versus asynchronous so what is that so uh, this what happening for example in the online teaching say uh, even now say if i work from home now so what i am doing just before the session i had my first hour i have taught one course i was in this phase which is synchronous mode what happens i am the instructor i am the instructor i have microphone webcam other media using which i am delivering my lecture so we have the internet that facilitates you know this to reach out to our learners so they have their own tools either through mobile or phone or you know in case if he call uh, for teaching all that computer using them that teaching learning happens here communication happens in real time 
here uh, you know students learn at the same time while we are teaching the advantage is that student can raise his hand and he can ask for clarification we can get the feedback immediately this is synchronous learning where communication happens in real time advantages we know that it's more engaging we can get instant feedback and clarification then what about asynchronous activity in asynchronous activity we have already uploaded educational contents maybe videos downloaded from youtube or my own lecture videos textbooks emails you know all that assignments or uh, there is a discussion box where we have already sent those items so students will be listening them learning them at their own pace you know so they can set the pace of their learning not necessarily that they have to run along with us right so these are the advantage of it this is known as asynchronous activities we traditional teachers we feel that students are not active inside the classroom we expect them to immediately reply to our questions we actually now have to rethink about our strategy rather than you know stamping or something on our students that they are not serious something like that we have to understand that the learning psychology the learning pattern of this generation students change dramatically for various reasons so we should be understanding that a student if he is not attending the class or if a student is not responding positively it doesn't mean that he can't be learning he will not be able to learn it so students now prefer to learn to digest and dissect at their own pace at their own location so they want the flexibility in all that so we should understand that that is possible we should understand that that scope we need to develop deliberately within our student community after all uh, you know what the survey says is uh, 70% of the engineers who are studying you know today or forget about engineers any you know uh, graduate studying today will be working in a job that has not been invented yet that is not being Uh, existing yet so that means whatever we are you know preparing them so may not be immediately relevant or relevant for their entire thing the only way for them is lifelong self motivated learning is the key so that means as a teacher we have the role we have the responsibility to teach the students how to do that self learning lifelong self learning how it has to be done so we need to deliberately some portion of the learning should be done through asynchronous activity we should be preparing for them so that's the message i am trying to say so in asynchronous mode communication is not live in asynchronous mode students you know learn at different times immediately they cannot be able to get their doubts clarified they learn at their own pace so this is what the you know asynchronous mode which is better this is not that which is better over the other both are both can complement each other this is what we call it as hybrid online teaching ideally that's what we do now we send material in advance or we send material after that we send the video links we send the notes you know they are expected to read so hybrid mode is combination mix of synchronous and asynchronous i share you know uh, for one of the courses for my son who is doing you know is uh, btech electrical in iit madras uh, so the professor what he does is he used to share two three lecture hours which he is supposed to be teaching well in advance the pre recorded video well curated educational content meant for those classes well in advance to them 
then he will be having say one class per week or two class per week only where he will be clarifying the doubts doubts clarification discussion class problem solving class so there i i could see you know my son where uh, you know because learning is learning and teachings are different i can teach which is a external thing learning is a internal thing even the extraordinary teacher can't make the student to learn unless his own mind opens unless he thinks to learn it's internalizing internalize internal you know, process so what happens in this process the students are taking the initiative to learn on their own so you know so the real learning happens because they learn on their own with the material they go refer back i'm just sharing you that so what happens then for the doubt clarification discussion purposes he will bring in a lot of case studies into the classroom this is what i have seen a faculty is doing which my son has said is really benefiting greatly by that so this is a typical hybrid online teaching mode that's what i mean to say blended teaching is this this is what i think uh, finally we will be landing into where people there cannot be no substitution to classroom uh, teaching face to face teaching nobody will be denying that the value it brings in the social quotient there are many human skills or life skills that needs to be learned so they have to be in campus that's agreed for example uh, there are some slow learners or there are some doubt clarification session or sunday we need to conduct a special class or saturday night we need to do for four students they have class now we need not to go into the college we need not be going on sunday for taking the special class we need not to be having 7 to 9 o'clock for you know doubt clarification session for two students now those supplementary things can be done through online through e learning so this is what i am predicting where 60 40 or 70 30 or 80 20 the proportionate can be anything depending upon the nature of the course nature of you know the institution how they perceive it but this blended learning what is going to be future where you know we are going to see more and more classroom face to face teaching plus e teaching so this is the background the last point i want to tell you it is you might have heard about this flipped classroom concept so better we will not evaluate about this because this is universally already it has been accepted that this is the best model yeah one has to move forward so what is that in traditional classroom you do as a professor i prepare day and night going through the lot of material and i am having the course material in my hand and i come and deliver in the class student take the notes and the faculty will give the homework they will do homework activities at home this is what the traditional thing will do now we have to flip this so what is that flipping this homework activity is what we have to introduce our course material before in hand so we have to introduce the well curated highly productive engaging you know interactive educational course content to our students which they are expected to go through them before coming to the class because many things are what other types are there this is the working principle why you keep telling these are very basic stuffs if you can make a excellent educational content they will be able to grasp it why teacher has to keep sending a kinematic sum machine dynamic sum machine the difference between them what is this different there are five types there are eight types how it operates come on teacher job is to you know push the students to help the students towards higher order thinking skills you know the bloom's taxonomy you know that tree i'll come to that so this is what the flipped classroom where we will be introducing the course material yearly so student will be doing the homework at the first they will go through there classroom has to be used not for mere teaching to know the stuffs instead here discussion should happen inquiry should happen application based concept should happen group activity should happen 
demonstration should happen that's the idea okay so this what in class before student prepare and participate uh, prepare to participate in class activity then during the class student practice applying key concepts with the feedback from the teacher so teacher here is not sage uh, on the stage teacher here is a facilitator doing the job of the facilitator requires a lot of planning and a lot of maturity and a lot of understanding from the faculty point of view you know sage on the stage is easy this is more difficult because you need to make proprietary material for my course i'm handling kinematics of machinery the dynamics of machinery the material not necessarily that i can uh, i have to give my own video agreed this material can be anything well made material from the youtube i can give it to them fine but as a teacher i personally feel i have nptel videos if i give that nptel videos these are the links you go through and come back do you think that they will relate to us do you think that that material will be completely tailor made or custom made to our curriculum our syllabus no nothing like our own material nothing like our students listening material from our own words you know so they will relate to it if it is made by us of course for few excellently made demo videos or that we can use but not for all sir all topics already have lakhs of videos so what on the same topic you give your own perception each teacher you know the way they put things will be different they will bring life to that so so what for newton's first three laws if there are 1 million things so what so being in the teaching position for say i will be there for next or, or say totally 3 30 40 years in the field then what is our contribution at the end of the day what legacy you are going to leave to your own satisfaction and to the student community any way you are going to do that why can't you document it why can't you take the effort slowly so i firmly believe nothing like my own notes nothing like my own educational video for my course of course i will get inspiration from all the open sources of course i am going to take you know all that you know concepts for our betterment uh, available but i will try to provide my own way of delivering things my own way of uh, you know uh, making the material that is the key so in the flipped class concept will be very effective only when we have very effective educational content preferably developed by the you know course faculty himself since we do not have this since we simply download or give others or something or some are good some are you know okay they could not able to make a connect then this entire flipped class activity becomes ineffective so for this creating the own model is important please understand this always we have the students have complaint on us which we have to accept the faculty members normally teach uh, the exercise uh, you know the example problems easy problems in the class whereas in the examination or in the assignment they will give uh, you know hot questions higher order thinking you know kind of uh, uh, skills questions case study which are there in the exercise problem yes what we do at class we are only doing in the traditional mode we are only doing in class to cultivate only remember and understand these are the types these are blah 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 in our traditional classroom we are not made effort about apply analyze evaluate create because your time is enough or not sufficient to even to complete this aspect we are expecting our students to do all these higher order you know skills outside the flipped class it is done opposite way the basic remember understand types working principles the basic stuffs all are being done outside classroom asynchronous mode i will be making the material i will be giving to them what i will do it here i will bring the real time problem i will give the application 
where they will be able to apply, analyze, evaluate all these higher order thinking skills kind of a thing teacher is supposed to be doing inside the class where they should be given, you know, that exposure of solving, you know, higher order thinking skills. So this is what, what I mean to say for all this, this is very important. This is what we are, I am coming back to that. So the message is very clear. Creating your own educational content is the need of the art. At least I am foreseeing, I may be right or wrong. It's going to be the must to know skill for the teachers of the future. If you are yearly into the teaching career, please make a note of this. Please embrace this. If you can able to learn the skill of creating an effective educational content, then that is a must have skill that will, you know, give you a competitive edge in the longer run, uh, you know, especially the teaching field. That's what I foresee. Excellent. So context testing is important. We have learned why this will be more relevant in the coming days than ever before. Yes, because this is how the learning is going to happen. Learning, you know, thing going to happen that we should understand rather than complaining. Then before going to that, how I have created few, uh, I will give some uh, hardware and software requirements are there. I will just rush through them. We know that uh, for any online teaching, uh, your laptop, then good internet connectivity. Of course, for uh, doing this problem-based questions or uh, geometrical or graphical problems, we need drawing tablet, digital, uh, you know, digitizer with stylus. Of course, in order to be very effective, we need, of course, the laptop, uh, you know, the mic should do. But if you want to create uh, a very effective content, uh, whose uh, shell life, if you want it to be extended shell life, that should be really uh, well made. So especially the most important thing is the voice of the video is so important than the you know, video itself. So we should have kind of a microphone. Then of course webcam, otherwise it will be inbuilt in your laptop. So uh, having all this, what your online class setup will be that. I think this obvious thing, I know you all will be uh, excellent uh, online teacher by now. Now what are the some softwares that would be required for educational content? So obviously uh, when I make a video, I need some uh, camera which I have covered then audio should be uh, captured so something for you know editing uh, because if finally it will be a video so something required for video editing something required for screening or you know capturing the screen if i'm doing the autocad exercise i'm explaining to them uh, some software so something should be required to capture so we need some softwares right this is what normally will uh, you know, the traditional teachers will be more worried about. We are not so good at that, but no problem. Uh, the pace of learning for each and every one of you will be different. Uh, that doesn't matter. Uh, some can uh, do it in two months, three months, six months. You take three years, four years, slowly you keep learning one after another. So this is the uh, presentation software and whiteboard. You know that PowerPoint, uh, you know, it will all become like a must know thing for any teacher. So completely learning all the features of the PowerPoint itself, nothing like that. So there are, uh, you know, so many uh, videos all that available in the YouTube, you can easily get that. And then we have Google slide office 365. This is for presentation purpose. But what I would say, there are uh, important whiteboards, you should be aware of it. Uh, you know, there are uh, Microsoft whiteboard, then Google Jamboard, there are plenty, right? Uh, what I have been using is this. Please, you make a note. Wonderful uh, whiteboard. I think uh, some free version is there as well as paid version is there. The smart notebook, really awesome. At least because I got used to that. Mm -hmm. So how to use smart notebook, that is a different session altogether. But at least you can make a note. So we need to have some presentation software and whiteboard software that has to be installed. I said, you know, the screen should be recorded. 
when I'm teaching a program or something, you know, whatever I do, that has to be cast, that has to be captured, recorded. Sir, um, sir. Yes, professor. So, sorry. Okay. Uh, you can proceed, professor. No, no. Right, professor. If you, you know, if any disturbance, you please let me know, sir. If any anywhere I need to stop or any doubts to be there. Uh, no, no, no issue. That is, uh, some participants unmuted is mic. Uh, uh, fine, fine, fine. fine. Nice. Uh, no issue. Yeah. Okay. So then, next one is screen recorder. I, as I have said, you know, I'm not good at. Sir, can you compare this screen recorder? Please understand. I'm a novice. I mean, I'm not an expert, you know, I am the person who are, who is, uh, you know, in work in progress. Uh, so what I have used is Camtasia Studio. So OBS I have tried, but they said the screencast Omatic is the simplest one, easiest for doing this. So probably you can take screencast Omatic or OBS. Any one should be more than enough for you. Okay. This is for screen recorder software. Audio. Audacity is the best, so no other uh, uh, you know software is required. Only for recording and editing the uh, audio, right? This is Audacity software. Then video editing software. Any one video editing software is enough. Uh, you know, people are doing n number of video film or uh, they are telling many things. As I said, you know, I am not that expert to give all that. What I have done it is probably. Uh, this open shot should be more than sufficient. Camtasia, what I have used, uh, you know, then people are telling shortcut also, extremely simple to use, which is free. So any one uh, you should be having. Once if you have one, you have plenty of tutorials uh, how to get on with that. Or once if you know all, you know, the user interface will be same. Download the material, there is a trade, download them, edit them, save them, convert them. So by and large, uh, you know, that interface will be the same. Yes. So this is about uh, video editing. That means after capturing, uh, you know, the screen, all that, uh, I might have audio separately. Uh, I might have my video uh, taken separately. I might have a captured the screen. For example, I want to record this session. So what it has to be done, it has to capture my presentation. Then I have switched on my video. So it has to capture my face. So that is second input. Third one is there is a audio. So these are three inputs. So those three inputs, you know, uh, after that it can come to, we have to, you know, import it to this uh, video editing software. So I can edit somewhere I can remove my face or somewhere I can, uh, you know, uh, mute my audio, I can trim, I can, you know, do uh, many uh, kind of engaging effects. Okay, so that's what we need some software for that, right? Or unnecessary portions we have to do, we have to trim it each and every second is so important in the curated video, otherwise, to, otherwise students or listeners will uh, not be so engaged, uh, so interested because, uh, you know, the they go into you know so fast world they don't have patience to uh, this process and all so all that you will learn along the way then of course sometimes we need to stream uh, purpose you can do youtube for example what happened i have my laptop uh, all of a sudden the laptop uh, lifetime is four years five years all my data uh, once for all will be gone so I might be making all the video. I can't be sharing the huge video to my students through WhatsApp. I can't be sharing to them through uh, Gmail or that. Of course, we have some Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, all the clouds are there, but still it will have some limitation. So the best way is why can't you have your own YouTube account? If your uh, thing is either you publicly share it or if you don't want it to be shared with the public, uh, at least you upload it under unlisted uh, so that nobody will be knowing. Uh, you know, only you and those who are to whom you are going to send the link, only they will be using it. So it will be a kind of a secret link between you and your students alone. So where you need not have anything, even if your laptop goes off <laughs> or your file is deleted, uh, nothing, even if it's all stolen, all your material will be safely there 
in your YouTube uh, under unlisted. So that streaming, I feel extremely important. Finally, what we can do at the end of the day, uh, only one page or two page uh, list of the topics, the material, only the link will do. That's it. One page, you have covered the entire uh, course, entire 100 video, 200 videos with the topic wise links. No, like that, I'm just telling you. So that's very, so normally I'm not here to talk about how to uh, do video for YouTube, uh, how to earn money for YouTube. Please do not even venture out with that motive. Uh, my personal suggestion is for the sake of you know yearning through uh, YouTube for that sake as a teacher if you land there I think with that motive uh, if you do that uh, more likely that you, we will be disappointed right so the better way is uh, not for that purpose being a teacher that's my duty I am anyhow going to do this job uh, there I'm going to be there for next 30 40 years why can't I have my own material uh, earlier teachers, they used to have my professors. I still remember the OHP sheets. Oh God, 10 years, 20 years, uh, you know, over it, uh, this projector sheets, they have written so well, they will bring the handwritten notes. Oh God, that will be like, you know, like our puppet. It will be, if we, if we tilt that, it will be uh, broken. That brittle that has become, that means they are 10 years old, 20 years old, that are lecture notes. They preserved it because that is their honor. Same way for us, this is our uh, repository. That's what I feel. Okay, uh, right. Then sometimes we have to broadcast online. That's not required, but just I'm telling YouTube live facilities there. Excellent. Now only we are coming to the topic. <laughs> I think time now is 11.50. Yeah, I will wind up. How to create your own educational contents. Having learned the context, significance, right? Then some software lists. Now we are ready to go. What are the methods we have? It's not that all new to you. All you might have heard or all you might have used, but still as a refresher program, uh, you could uh, you know, uh, uh, listen to this. The first one is slide cast is the method. PPT we know, this advanced version of the PPT where we are going to add voice to it. That's that slide cast. The second model, I call it as tabletop. We have writing on paper or writing on a physical whiteboard or blackboard or green board that needs to be captured and content, video content has to be made. So the second type is tabletop. The third one, is third one is screencast where we have to record the screen the fourth one a very popular basic question of screencast it has its name by the person who popularized it which is known as Khan Academy style screencast this fellow to be really appreciated for the service uh, he has done uh, to the student community, the owner, you know, Salman Khan, uh, uh, he kind of a learned uh, youngster uh, who has taken the initiative. So besides that four types, we have a few more types. We will see at the end. First one, slide cast, PPT with voiceover. <laughs> so as a young teacher, you should be having firm grip over PPT making skill. There is no alternative to it. There are no option to you. You must be uh, learning how to make a decent, uh, you know, a basic, uh, a professional, uh, you know, a PPT. Once if you are reaching that stage, the next stage is we are going to record the narrations of each slide, which will be saved. PPT, PowerPoint itself has that option then we are going to save that either as a PPS file or MP4 file. This method is more suitable for theory and concept based topics. Now, for example, I am telling you about some theory. These are the four types. This would be good. That would be good. For this, this slide cast PPT with voiceover would be much better. If it has problems, numerical problems, 
graphical method, some computer coding, in that case, this may not be suitable. So what are the things required for making PPT? I need either laptop, then there must be a voiceover I need to give, so better mic. I still remember my initial days when I have tried to do that, that noise I could not, you know, first take itself has got so many takes because when we hear our voice, you know, my wife, the mixy sound, what she cooks there will be there, my fans, noise will be coming. So we used to make our kids, you know, sleep at midnight like a thief. And we used to uh, record uh, a thing at the silent ambience. Then we have learned that there are some noise cancelling, uh, you know, uh, software, so all that. So, okay, this is the basic one, uh, which we have. One minute, yeah. So let me share a basic one. This video will show you how to do a voice editor in Microsoft PowerPoint. There are many ways to do this, but this is just one easy, straightforward way to get your voice recorded while you're doing a PowerPoint presentation. So open in front of me. Uh, Professor, you could be able to hear the voice now? Audio? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Just I'm going to demonstrate the basic demonstration of how to give voiceover in your PPT. Please listen. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. A Microsoft PowerPoint presentation. Go to the slideshow tab and click on record slideshow. Start recording from beginning. And then click on start recording. Now be sure to talk, but to stop talking before you switch over to the next slide. While I'm talking, my voice is being recorded. And once I'm ready to switch to the next slide, it's important that I stop talking, switch to the next slide, and then you can continue talking again. If you talk while you're switching to the next slide, those words won't be recorded, so there will be some words missing. And it is quite a habit that we have to continue talking while we're switching over to the next slide. And you can continue recording, stop talking just before you're going to switch to the next slide and continue talking, continue recording. Now say you want to re-record whatever you said while presenting this specific slide. Then you can click on escape or press escape on your keyboard and you'll see that the voice recording, the audio file is situated here. Now while on this slide, you can re-record this slide by going to start recording from current slide. Don't click on start recording from beginning because then you have to re-record all the slides that you have already recorded on. Start recording from current slide. And here you can redo your recording and the audio file is automatically written over. And you can continue through all your slides. Once you're done, you can click on escape. And you'll see that the audio files are all here at the bottom. When you're ready to save, there's various file formats that you can save it in. So choose the one that will work best for you. The PowerPoint Show is quite a, a recommended one that works quite well because it's very useful and user-friendly for the person watching it. If you want to upload something on, um, uh, on YouTube, a video file may work better. I hope this helped. Um, Enjoy making your PowerPoint presentations accessible to them. Yeah, hope you got that. This is a basic one. You must be attempting if while creating a video, right? This is where you should be starting. Simplest and easiest method. So there are some links I have given, do's and don'ts in PowerPoint, some animating, how to do PowerPoint selection, how to add transition to your slides. Then uh, the one which I was in. These are the some key links probably I could share with you. Then second type is about the tabletop. Uh, you know, this is so popular. We have been seeing so many uh, cooking videos. Our Womacus make, you know, so delicious food. 
and they keep the camera over there you know uh, uh, in that kitchen and they capture the entire demonstration process of course that's what table talk so this is highly suitable from educational uh, perspective whenever you wanted to do a numerical problem or problem solving concept based i mean numerical or diagram based uh, concepts where we need to draw graphical based which cannot be done through ppt this is the most effective one we do not need anything we need the paper and just a mobile uh, phone or camera just to capture this is also easiest one i have put that under two types here uh, one is writing on paper this is uh, so uh, good uh, this all like homemade uh, innovative the most creative uh, ways that our teaching community have tried during the most difficult phase of their life i should say because uh, you know uh, we also teacher also like a frontline worker you know uh, we have really gone through this uh, stress uh, during this uh, pandemic phase so very thoughtful process two chairs they put two sticks and they kept their mobile phone and they have see the paper they are writing there even here there is one small thing they are capturing there all uh, sort of uh, interesting thing to just have a view it's a though very so basic you see the setup i have taken a glass lab taken two boxes two shoe boxes i have taken and i put the glass lab on it so whatever i work whatever work i am doing that is being recorded on this phone and if the zoom meeting is going on and i am sharing my screen i can do that also if i want to make some video for my student it becomes very convenient for me to do that i keep on writing whatever i have to write here so let me just show it to you if supposing i want to draw the circle i can draw the circle and i can if i want to write something i can write anything and it is easily visible to my students so this is how i have worked out you, so you can see it's nothing difficult i have just taken two simple boxes and i have put the glass lab over it so it works very well and i can i am able to cast my screen or i am able to uh, make the videos and share it with my students while writing the work awesome isn't it just imagine the same content is available uh, in the youtube just the teacher downloads and sends it do you think that our students will relate it can't be better than you know their teacher explains with her own voice and with her own you know energy uh, life giving to it nothing like our own video that's what i strongly believe this is another way table top but we can't call it as a table top we have tripod or center and you know it will be capturing the video so this is also coming under table top where we are writing on the physical whiteboard or this is like a light board where faculty will be writing that side when we capture here uh, this will give you a nice experience so this is about table top so these first two are kind of a basic elementary mode that one should attempt or one can attempt where uh, they do not require any additional uh, major hardware requirement uh, you need not to invest a lot uh, all that even your mobile phone all pc i mean your laptop should do right these are uh, some mobile holder some flexible long arm lazy mobile something uh, i think related to this i thought of uh, sharing i am not doing any marketing here i am just giving you uh, these accessories also uh, should be crucial for us excellent now is what according to me if you learn the screen cast you can do wonder according to me this is enough for us to do very effective educational content so what we are going to do we are going to record the computer screen audio explanation if required my video also can be done this is very useful see i want to teach my uh, some software some excel spreadsheet i want to teach or i want to teach some simulation software or say programming language or uh, you know some gaming or anything i want to sh share it 
so simply whatever i see my on my screen i could be able to share i could be able to you know cast it record it and i can do that so this is more popular one you know more effective one for everything right especially for teaching courses uh, that requires simulation software or you know all that stuff a bit complicated why we need uh, because voice is required we need microphone good microphone then video we are going to take so there must be a better video camera i mean camera then we are going to record it so we need screen recording software i have used obs studio then after getting that that needs to be trimmed that needs to be edited we need video editing software camtasia right so let me share for a minute uh, something uh, that you know i have done this is the direction so, of f3 so uh, now i have just muted there you can see sir can you able to hear me professor Professor, Professor, can you able to hear me? Sir, we can hear your voice, but that audio. Yeah, uh, deliberately I have muted, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, just I am yes. doing it to demonstrate this. This is what I have said. Uh, you know, uh, there is one software uh, for uh, whiteboard. I have said smart notebook. This is the smart notebook. The smart notebook will have all the tools at the top, but I have not shown that. I have only selected the uh, my board area alone. so screen i can select the area of the screen which i need to capture i which i have captured now what i am trying to do i am capturing the screen and my voice also is being captured and i tell you this physical presence makes sense students will relate to us only when they see us because you know uh, so this what a yeah, typical thing i have done so uh, this is the earlier video i have done but now uh, what happens is when i have this material student at their own pace they can stop they can pass you know do that all that thing can be done just you know uh, i am uh, explaining that this force exerted by link 3 on 4 i call this as f3 4 but very interestingly what will be the direction of f14 right uh, just i don't want to bore you with that subject uh, stuff i mean to say that this is where i have slowly learned uh, that uh, then i have learned to that after seeing some videos why should i the background this is my the current background uh, my white uh, wall then i thought uh, why should I have uh, only my face above there then uh, we need to have a kind of a green <laughs> cloth uh, you know chrome uh, purpose uh, you know which can select the background all updation can be done later so this is very most effective uh, thing uh, this uh, people really uh, like that because it gives each and everything we have done that uh, just i'm sharing uh, because we are demonstrating this students what they will do Uh, once if we teach in the class they will say any doubt any doubt they will say no doubt but once they go back home there are so many intricacies involved here so many parallel line perpendicular line so much of you know procedures involved so if they have the video they can pass and that get the thing and uh, you know they can learn at their own pace so this is what uh, just uh, not, not to talk about my thing i'm just telling you uh, this is what according to me the most important thing still i keep learning on that aspect so how to make lessons record your presentation with smart board some videos link i have given then i have khan academy style screen cast this again the same screen cast without our face because capturing one person's video is not that easy that is so difficult because uh, there must be a lighting involved otherwise our face will not be looking good if i give lighting on one side this side it will be black so that will put a lot of challenges while editing while capturing you know while making into that 
So that will normally will be a huge headache, especially if you are a beginner. So we have to do a lot of trial and error method to have our small video onto that. But I prefer you to slowly have your face onto it because that's what your identity. It is not that we want to put our stamp onto it. It is not on the personal agenda. Even otherwise, that will give you know energy to the student. That will motivate. Students are not alone. They are engaging with you, though they are you know plugged with their phones. They are engaging with you only because your face is there. So to give the life, I strongly recommend that better to have your thing. But it requires a lot of challenges. In that case, without the video capturing the screen or doing the screen cast is so easy. That's what he has done. This is the Salman Khan who has you know founded this Khan Academy that has grown least sound bounds. He is the one who has done it initially. Because of that, this method itself popularly called as Khan Academy style screencast. So what is that Khan Academy style? Nothing. Just like a screencast. Just like how I have shown. Only thing is, you know, audio will be there without the video of the presentation. Direction is to the right. So what I've just described to you right here is a vector quantity. So this. So uh, this is a typical uh, Cons Academy slide cast. Don't worry about the black background. We can change the background to black, green, whatever color we want, even in our PPT or even in our blackboard, whiteboard, I have said, even we can change that. So this is what the typical uh, user interface of Con base. So this you can try before you try with your video. So this is also a typically uh, a, a screencast, screencast. These are the uh, popular types, popular types, right? Khan Academy, fourth type. Now let me rush in with other types. I found some other types also more interesting. One simple thing which I found it is the paper slide show video. Uh, let us listen from the person who has done that. Video. So here we start. This is a paper slide show or a paper slide video. A paper slide show on how to make a paper slide show. You just have to follow these important steps. Number one, select a topic. Make sure it's a topic that you're interested in, relevant, newsworthy, related to curriculum, or in this case, one that is assigned to you. Step two, research your topic, learn your topic, study your topic, know your topic. You need to be the experts in this to make this an interesting video. Three, you and your partner or your team will then need to write a script. You think you can just do this by ad-libbing? No way, you need to write a script. Then, four, make your slides. These are slides done on paper, hence paper slideshow. Colorful, bold, big letters, make it easy to see so when it's being videotaped, they'll be able to see it on screen. And the slides need to be relevant to your topic and make sense and go along with your information. Fifth, practice, practice, practice. You and your team will need to decide who's saying what, who's flipping the slides, who may do the videotaping. Make sure you practice so you get it right. Because on the next step, you're going to let you know, you're going to let your teacher know when you're ready. And this is a one take video. So if you stumble over your words like I just did, it doesn't matter. It's one take only, which takes us to number seven. You're going to make your video. Your teacher will get you guys set up. And when you're ready, you'll say go. He or she will push the record button and you'll make your video. Next, watch it, learn from it, have fun. 
right i just thought uh, uh, this also i don't know where we can use effectively but uh, this is also a way if you see here it is also a tabletop uh, but uh, instead of a paper we are using the slideshow so it becomes a paper slideshow so which i thought that then nowadays uh, especially in abroad and all podcasts are being used very effectively uh, even we do that now in uh, whatsapp has become now whatsapp university <laughs> we deal everything through whatsapp uh, even when we are telling the instruction nowadays uh, you know for the want of time sometimes we record it and send it that's nothing but podcasts so podcasts uh, can be but that is not in terms of podcast podcast is deliberately we will be recording the audio alone and we will be editing them properly using audacity kind of a software uh, for particular things and uh, that audio file will be your educational content you know uh, of late uh, last six months you know i've been uh, 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 you know we are all uh, going towards the spotify uh, at least i am using that extraordinary you know podcast a uh, kind of a platform uh, normally they are used for uh, teaching language motivational uh, talks uh, some summary of lectures for that they are very effective uh, when they could be able to communicate the history story motivation thing when they could be able to communicate all that so effectively through podcast Uh, why can't uh, we try that for our uh, educational content i think i have been tried that but uh, this is also one way this is little bit advanced one the last one i suppose animation videos or explainer videos who doesn't like animation who won't like explainer thing yes which will we call people immersive learning we ask for you know engaging video when we go and see in theaters very big movies say jay john dick thing say bogabali or some other movie that way we are immersed into the screen you know it is we call it as a experience we say you know just now we thought that the movie started but the interval has come we don't know how the time has gone that's what we call about experience that's what we call it as the learner should be involving with our educational content so uh, the educational content length can be anything provided it is engaging provided it gives the experience provided it relates to them you take along the way <laughs> so in that uh, scenario this animation and explainer videos are more more effective which can be used effectively for multiple purposes uh, finally what happened after having done some 60 70 lecture videos through screen cast then i have got you know some temptation to try animation explainer video then people have been this advertisement people i got it through this doodle Uh, there is a one animation app a kind of you know which i have purchased i am going to share uh, no this is not professional made this is very uh, amateurish uh, kind of that you listen to this hello everyone it's me dr v jay kumar welcome to my channel i am making lecture videos for the benefit of mechanical engineering students if this is your first time and not yet subscribed yet please press the subscribe button and also the notification bell icon so that to get notified all my brand new videos this video we shall see the key differences between area moment of inertia and mass moment of inertia you just see uh, you know the animation part of it and uh, the explainer part of it how differently the education content is being done in day to day life we have been seeing so many applications so many structural members wherein beams are used in this particular case why is the eye being oriented this way and not the other way around right then let us take the second case have you ever noticed the cross section of a ray it is in uneven eye shape why is it short why not the cross section made of other sections 
interesting, isn't it? Also, so many structural members, mobile towers, transmission lines, structures used in constructions, beams and columns are used. Why they are having cross-sectional shapes like IHC? Why not? They are not made of solid rectangular shapes, circular cross-sectional areas. Is there any engineering reasons for that? Obviously, yes. There you are. The reasons for all those questions are the concept of area moment of inertia. <laughs> right. I hope you got a feel. <laughs> you know, it's a very elementary way of making explain a video. We can't call completely animation. Uh, they have uh, duly has given uh, you know some property, some back out step up, you know setup, and we can use blackboard, green board, you know transparent board. We can change, so we can. Uh, if you are really good in drawing, you know we can make that uh, uh, this and all. Uh, there are so many features where we can explore, but we teachers can't be uh, you know putting all our hours into that, you know, we have our other roles to play. Uh, but like this, I have tried uh, uh, my videos using Doodly, which is very well received by students. I'm telling you that these efforts, and most of them I have not shared publicly, of course, 70% of them have shared. Most of them I put it and uh, I put under unlisted and I've shared to my, our, my students. They really feel, you know, uh, their understanding of the subject has really improved. That has helped them to understand uh, the concept much better way. Uh, you know, for us, this is like an initial investment. Now you know what I do. Uh, it made my job easier. Once for all, I have this. If anybody asks area amount of inertia, I should not be keep teaching them so conventionally. Instead, what I will do, I will share this. Then inside the classroom, what I will do, I will conduct the you know discussion session. So now what I am trying is partially, I am trying to experiment the flipped classroom setup, which I have advocated at the beginning. And now I feel why universally such kind of a mechanisms or methods are called so effective. So uh, I feel because I have a decent educational content, decent one of course there are a lot of scope for the improvement but because i have that i have the whole idea so i am designing the remaining thing i am spending my time for you know the discussion and other purposes so these are the seven types i thought of telling tips nothing we have to create the experience as i said the movie the immersion uh, the must make students a part of learning we have to be engaging the video so engaging means it must be content quality it must be a uh, production quality uh, you know uh, it must be uh, you know all that uh, you know we will uh, by taking uh, scripted video by planning by bringing into our experience uh, by learning what things are happening around, uh, we should be able to do the justice. Already we have been doing that, you know, just learning the thing. Then people will be asking about the thumb roll. Uh, there is no rule which is the optimal length of the video. Uh, as I said, the movie you are watching three hours, four hours, five hours. People are watching in the Netflix, you know, uh, 10, 10, 10 uh, series at a stretch, eight hours, six hours. Why? Because so engaging. So there is no thumb rule, but it's understood that our retention rate or not retention, yeah, the concentration thing is only about 10 to 15 minutes for a student. So keeping that in mind, uh, ideally shorter videos are better, say five minutes, four minutes or 10 minutes would be better. So if you have a 15 minutes class, there I have to talk about four topics or a particular topic. You break down the topic into four small uh, subtopics. So you have four video chunks for each topic. So don't uh, try to go uh, in one flow like that. You know, these are the some tips. So we can keep talking about all that. But I hope uh, I thought of giving you this overview, right? So these are all the various types uh, that we have, as I said, in June 2020, like any many of you or many of the members, I also tried my hand here. So this is my channel. 
uh, now when I look back, oh God, I have about 80 videos to deal with. Uh, you know, some videos have gone, you know, uh, some 50,000 things. So far, 1.3 uh, lakh people have uh, viewed my this uh, small contribution. So something like that. So just I'm trying to uh, share. Uh, this is the story I've evolved all of a sudden, uh, just, you know, less than a year. Uh, where I'm not at all good at, even still I'm not good at uh, using uh, systems, uh, the technical aspects of it. So the message from me is uh, when the traditional uh, art core, this passionate teacher like Jaikmar can uh, at this juncture of his career uh, is willing or can learn and can make a decent educational video, I'm damn sure that all you young teachers can definitely do uh, do uh, better than that so i wish everyone you know to make a try and eh? all the very best for your career together we can definitely make a huge difference to the student community so thank you so much for your patient listening thank you so much for the opportunity over to you professor murugan uh, thank you professor thank Thank you very much. Yeah, you have opened up a new uh, idea to all the teachers. Uh, uh, thank you. Some of, the, some of the participants will try to make videos on their uh, own subjects. Sure, I will be happy. If a, few least, a few of them, uh, you know, uh, get uh, some inspiration and if they start you know uh, doing their try uh, we can feel that is also a, a success of this uh, program as well yes sir definitely so maybe i may be the one of the <laughs> <laughs> oh so kind of you professor thank you uh, there are few questions in the chat box professor uh, yeah Yes, sir. I can check there. Uh, one minute. Sir, send the doodly video link in chat so that we can practice. We'll try that. Uh, what are the way we make quality of education equal to international students? I think that is a very uh, broad uh, uh, thing. Uh, there are many things that are under our control. There are many things that are out of our controls. But only we can control things that are under our control thing is that uh, we have to become a uh, you know quality teacher by ourselves so passionate teacher by ourselves so uh, you know uh, that is in our control uh, you know we know that uh, teacher is the one who has to be student for lifetime uh, so uh, you know all that basics what in our hand so uh, then there must be a compassion uh, with which we have to deal with each every one of the student those days have gone uh, when we go and enter into the uh, staff room we used to afraid uh, those days have gone so students are you know there is no hierarchy between the student and teacher they are all same it's only teaching learning process all the basics we can do that thank you that's it professor yeah Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Uh, thank you, sir. So we have come to the end of session two of day five. So thank you all for joining us. Next, at 1.15 p.m., we'll be having the session three of day five. It's going to be on student diversity and teaching learning in higher education by Dr. C. Shiva Joyce, who is the Dean of Savita Teaching Learning Center of Savita Engineering College. So I request you all to join back again at 1.15 p.m. in the same link. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor, for Thank your you, valuable sir. time. Yeah. Thank, you, Thank, sir. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye, sir. Thank you.